Good afternoon. This is Pastor Carl from St. Peter's United Methodist Church with your weekly update for Friday, April the 16th, 2021. I want to invite you to come and worship with us this Sunday. We're having worship in the sanctuary at 8.30 and 11. We have some of our Sunday school classes are meeting now. They meet at 9.45. Uh, we hope you'll come and be a part of all of this. We record our 8.30 service and post it online on YouTube, on Facebook, and on our web page uh, a little bit later in the morning. So if you're not yet ready to come back for... Uh, in-person worship that's okay you can still worship with us I want to remind folks that the Red Cross is holding a blood drive here at the church on Thursday April the 22nd that's next Thursday from noon until 5 30 p.m. Uh, we uh, invite you to sign up to give blood it is giving the gift of life uh, tell others about the blood drive uh, this church has been able to help the Red Cross a lot through our previous blood drives and I know this one is going to be um, just the same as the others people are going to be helped lives will be saved as most of you have heard by now I lost my father uh, at the age of 90 a little over a week ago and uh, this week my family uh, is holding a, a private memorial service at uh, Historic Oakwood Cemetery in Raleigh and I know that um, I've received so much love and support from this church over the last week your cards uh, your calls your texts your messages um, you guys really reached out to me in the loss of my dad and it means so much to me and so what I want to do today if you'll allow me this space um, is I'd like to share with you a little bit of the message that um, I'm sharing at my dad's service um, just as a way to let you be a part of that celebration of his life I want to tell you how my dad loved teaching. He loved racing. I don't know if all of you knew that my dad was a race car driver, but he was, and he loved to race. He loved to travel, and he loved his family. My dad was one of these people, and whatever he did, he wanted to be the best at it. And he worked hard to help others become the best at what they did as well and ever the teacher. His goal was to enable those around him to discover and to develop their own abilities so that they could succeed in their lives. That's just the way he was. As an educator, he taught at NC State for decades. And he was passionate and he was innovative when he taught. He influenced how engineering is taught at the university level. And he won numerous awards for his academic work. As a race car driver, my dad was a fierce competitor. When he won, which he did, he won a lot of races. Oh, but he was happy when he won. But there were other times that he'd blow an engine or something would break on the car, and when that happened... Let me tell you, it was a long, long, quiet ride back home with him. And you knew better than to poke the bear on that ride. Now, as a father, my dad pushed me and my sisters to be the best that we could be. And he did his best to provide us with a good home life. Now, our family had their issues but their struggles but every family has their issues we weren't any different than anybody else but one thing my dad did was he instilled in us the importance of family he taught us the importance of holding on to the traditions that help to make a family into the family that it is and I'm going to be forever thankful that he did that for us and in his marriage to Louise he always encouraged her 
to be all that she could be as they journeyed together for 36 years. My dad loved flowers. And his mother loved flowers. Maybe he got that from her. I don't know. But I want to share a story about his, his love of flowers. One year, he decided that he was going to plant azalea bushes in our backyard. And he went out and spent all this money and bought these azalea bushes and bought the stuff to fix the soil just right. And he dug all of these holes, and the holes were in a straight line, and they were perfectly spaced equally apart. He was an engineer, so that's how he did things. And he planted them. And shortly after he finished his meticulous work of planting these azalea bushes, our beloved St. Bernard unceremoniously ate every one of those bushes right down to the ground so there was nothing left. Oh well, so much for the azaleas. But at least the dog never got to my dad's roses. They were in the front yard. My dad was so proud of his roses. He won prizes with his roses, and he would, he would love to tell you about his prize-winning roses. Like everything else he did in his life, he had to make sure that his roses were the best. He worked to help those roses become the best that they could be. Another story I'll share about him today. Um, he and my mother were getting ready one year for their annual Christmas open house for the faculty that they had at our house on Pitt Street. And my sisters and I were quite young at the time. I'm not even sure if my younger sister, Christine, was walking yet. I just remember being very small. And we were in the dining room, and we were there with my dad, and my mom had put all the food out, and it looked so beautiful. And we were sitting there looking at all the food, wishing that we could dig in and eat some, but we knew, don't mess up that food. Not before the party starts. And we're standing there, and you may remember there was a commercial on TV back in those days, an animated commercial for Hawaiian Punch. And my dad really liked that commercial, and he came up to us kids, to my sister and I, and he said, Hey, kids, how about a nice Hawaiian Punch? And we said, Sure. And my dad swung his fist in front of our faces like that, and he went up, and he went right through the middle of the crystal chandelier that was hanging over the table and glass and crystal began to rain down onto and into all of the food that my mother had prepared. You might ask me what happened after that. I really don't remember. I do, I do seem to recall there was a lot of screaming and yelling on the part of my mom. There was a lot of trying to smooth things out on the part of my dad's. And I believe that my dad then left the house to make a quick trip to the Winn-Dixie for some chips and dip so he could make sure that party was still going to be the best it could be. Well, after he and Louise sold that house on Pitt Street and they'd moved out and the new folks hadn't moved in yet, I went to the house and I walked through it. I walked through that empty house kind of remembering the different things that happened in the different rooms. And I got to the dining room and I looked up at the chandelier, and this was 20 some years later, and I noticed that there were still pieces missing. Yep, my dad left his mark. You could tell that he'd been there. And he's done that with all of us in a way. He's left his mark. You look at our lives, you can tell that he's been here. I'm not saying that we're like a bunch of broken chandeliers. No, but each of us has been affected by him in some way that's going to last forever. Whether he was teaching in a classroom or traveling overseas or driving on a track, my dad built life-changing relationships. And he may be gone, but his impact on our lives and those of others is going to go on. 
And I know that when my family gathers for the picnic in the Rose Garden afterward, I know that I'm going to hear a lot of stories from people there about how my dad touched their lives. And, you know, those stories are important. When we lose a loved one, it's important that we share our stories because those stories help us hold on to the memory of somebody who's no longer here because death has separated them from us. Death is a reality that comes with life. Our physical bodies aren't made to last forever. And my dad, being an engineer, he understood this analogy really well when I was talking to him about it. I said, like an old car, our bodies wear out after so many miles. And then in death, we're released from those bodies that no longer work right. But the Bible tells us that death does not have to be the end. It does not have to be an ending. Luke's Gospel tells the story of how in the final hours before Jesus died, there was a thief that was put to death on the cross next to him. And the thief looked at his situation and he said, You know, I deserve what I've got. I deserve to die today for the things I've done. But not this other guy, Jesus. He doesn't deserve to die. He hadn't done anything wrong. He shouldn't be dying a death like this. That thief recognized his own mortality and he recognized his own failings and we folks we are all mortal and we all have our failings and those failings they prevent us from being the best that God wants us to be and that just comes with being human but in that moment, when the thief looked at Jesus and he thought about his own mortality, he thought about his own failings, he looked at Jesus and what he saw was God's grace and mercy. Jesus was willing to die so that the thief could be forgiven for his misdeeds. And it all made sense to him. And he, he looked at Jesus and he said, Jesus, remember me when you enter your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Surely I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. In that moment, Jesus offered the thief a message of hope. The brokenness of this dying man's life was going to be transformed into the goodness that God had always desired for him. These words of Jesus, this promise to a condemned man, to a dying man, well, these words offer hope and assurance that death does not have to be an ending. But let's get real. Death feels like an ending. Death leaves a gaping hole in our lives. Death redefines what normal is in our world because nothing is ever going to be the same again. We find ourselves heavy-hearted over the loss of a loved one. In this case, we mourn over the loss of a husband, a father, a grandfather, an uncle, an educator, a colleague, and a friend. Death seems so cruel because death takes away from us those that we love and death seems so final. Death can leave us feeling lost, feeling helpless and searching for hope. Even as a pastor, I struggle with the loss of a loved one. In this case, it was my father. And it's hard for me. And it's going to be hard. 
and I'm going to need help. And I need hope. We all do when we lose somebody that we love. And I don't know where each of you finds hope. I don't know where everybody finds hope because not everybody thinks alike. Not everybody holds the same beliefs. Those who are part of St. Peter's, I've got a pretty good idea what your beliefs are. But you know there's others who are going to hear this message who they don't know about Jesus or they don't believe in Jesus. We don't all hold the same beliefs in this world. But there is something that everybody that my dad knew, there's something that we all share. And that's his death because it impacts each one of us. And my prayer is that for everybody who knew my dad, that they're able to find some hope to help them move through this loss. In Psalm 121, the psalmist writes, I lift up my eyes to the hills, from where will my hope come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Personally, I find my help and my hope in the words of the scriptures. I find them in God's promise of life eternal through my faith in Christ. And that promise gives me assurance that death does not have to be an ending. That my dad can be reunited with his loved ones who've gone before. That my dad and I can be together again one day. The Bible's message of eternal life helps me right now. It helps me all the time, but it, it especially helps me in this difficult time. And it gives me hope. God the Creator is a God of mercy who loves my Father even to this day. And God's grace, that is God's undeserved love for each of us, God's love which is freely given to us, that grace is sufficient. God's word promises us love and a life that never ends. And that's a promise that I claim. And it's a promise that anyone can claim for themselves. God's promise of eternal life found in the scriptures is a message of hope. A hope that can help us face the days ahead during this painful time of transition. No, my dad may no longer be here in body. But by the grace of God, I can hope to be with him again one day. And I pray that anyone who hears this message today can find some hope in that promise. And I know that when I do see my father again, he will be the best that he could ever be because he's going to be completely all that God created him to be. Thank you for listening today and allowing me to share this message. I just felt a need to share this with my church family. Remember, I am praying for you.